While the U.S. government has imposed sanctions on Ethiopia and Eritrea over human rights abuses in Tigray, and U.S. is threatening of further actions against Ethiopian government, U.S. government-backed news source is allegedly backing Ethiopian government. I'm talking about the Voice of America viewers, VOA. Several articles have been published uh, in the past two days which indicate that Voice of America's coverage of Tigray war has been biased. It has been in support of Ethiopian federal government. Voice of America has not done any investigative reporting about uncovering human rights abuses uh, being committed in Tigray. Uh, viewers, I did a video on uh, the use of drones in Tigray uh, in December, I think. At the start of December, I did a video, viewers, and in that video, I quoted an article which was published on Voice of America's website, viewers. In that article, uh, the writers had claimed that the UAE was not involved in providing drones to Ethiopian government. And the article was published by the Voice of America. But later uh, it was revealed that UAE backed Ethiopian government by providing combat drones. Now we know views that uh, General Said Khan, Mulugaita, Gabriel Hivot, uh, uh, then uh, Katacho and several other TPLF leaders and some neutral sources have confirmed that UAE did provide combat drones to Ethiopian government. So, Voice of America's coverage of Tigray war is under question, viewers. This uh, organization is backed by US government viewers. 250 million US dollars is the annual budget of uh, Voice of America, which is provided by the US government. Why is that on one hand, uh, the US government is threatening of imposing further sanctions on uh, Ethiopia? while Voice of America is allegedly supporting Ethiopian government. Firstly, we would say, uh, uh, articles which have been published over the past uh, two days, they mention that Voice of America has covered those stories in which uh, TPLF uh, members were accused of committing atrocities like uh, my Kadra massacre voice of america gave extensive coverage to my Kadra massacre and several stories were published about this massacre because uh, tplf uh, youth militia samre was uh, allegedly behind this attack that is why voice of america covered this massacre on the other hand voice of america did not cover Aksom massacre as much as it did uh, my Kedra massacre. Aksom massacre occurred at the end of November views, and it was uh, said that Aratian forces were behind this massacre. They killed uh, dozens of innocent civilians in Aksom town views. Voice of America did not cover uh, Aksom massacre as extensively as it did my Kedra massacre. Secondly, viewers. Asan Patenkan is a journalist who was working with the Voice of America. At the end of April, he resigned and he wrote in his resignation that uh, the Voice of America's coverage of Tigray war was not neutral and unbiased. Why did uh, Voice of America back Ethiopian government in this war? Some uh, critics say views that in October 2018, head of Voice of America's Africa division, Nagusi Mangasha, met with Prime Minister of Ethiopia, Abiy Ahmed. After that, Voice of America's coverage of Ethiopia changed and it became 
pro ethiopian government was i'll show you a clip in which uh, you can see nagushi mangasha uh, meeting prime minister of ethiopia abi ahmed uh, some protests have also been carried out against the voice of america various protesters have chanted slogans against voice of america protests have been carried out in the us as well I, i'll show you a clip in which protesters can be seen chanting slogans shame on voice of america in front of the offices of voice of america well voice of america is being accused of being pro abi ahmed abi ahmed government is accusing several international news outlets of being pro tpl just a few days ago simon mox in new york times reporter was expelled by ethiopian government ethiopian government accused simon mox of uh, doing inaccurate reporting about tigray war uh, ethiopian government has issued warning letters to several journalists of the writers the bbc dwtv uh, and several other news outlets so journalists have been facing criticism from both sides views but voice of america is the first international news source which is being accused of being pro ethiopian government now we'll watch three videos first video shows protests outside voice of america office uh, by uh tdf supporters in the us second video shows a statement given by belin siom ethiopian uh, government spokesperson she is uh, talking about a bbc journalist who has joined tigray defense forces and last video clip shows a meeting between naguse mangasha former voice of america africa division head with prime minister of ethiopia bi ahmed in 2018 after this meeting reportedly voice of america's coverage of ethiopia became pro abi ahmed i think for much <laughs> last week we witnessed as a nation uh, one senior journalist who had left his post at bbc and joined the terrorist cell in tigray which has been outlawed so these are some clear concerns that uh, we have um, within uh, the country in terms of accurate portrayal of what is happening and facts on the ground really making it out to the to the world so this is particularly important because such materials are being uh, uh, pushed by tplf sympathizers Uh, that the global community and international media are calling upon to provide context and analysis on the situation on the ground so there's peddling of misinformation disinformation but then these are also the people who are being called to provide um, accounts of what is happening uh, within the country and within the region however context doesn't come easy sitting thousands of miles uh, disconnected from what's happening on the ground and behind sc screens while uh, fabricating um, at one's fingertips is easy highlight of my visit was of course the call we got from the prime minister's office to visit him so on october 22nd he was honest i couldn't believe it that he could have time for us because his place seems to be full and we went to his office at 9 a.m in the morning we spent about with the managing editor of the horn of south africa service we spent about an hour and 20 minutes with him off the record background briefing it was really very interesting What kind of person is Abi Ahmed really? This is the first time I met him actually. I, I didn't know him before. I know him of course as the new prime minister. I have been following his speech. Unfortunately when he came to visit the diaspora also I was out of the country. I went with the director Amanda Bennett to to the to Congo and Nigeria. I didn't have the chance to meet him. It was the first time I met him actually. He's a very impressive person. Uh down towards extremely polite hospitable actually when we went in he just hugged us and he knew that I had been away for close to 40 years i think this is how was away maybe over 20 years mm -hmm. so he was really very uh, very humble also very candid uh, very open and he seems to be quite well read